I always have to distill down because I'd love to just stand here and tell you all this stuff all day long. For example, that John the Baptist was nothing more than a replay of an Isis Osiris mystery cult, beheading or dismembering that precursor principle to, to the Christ. Okay. The word Christ, as I said, comes from Greek, Christos, to rise above the polarity. Okay. Uh, the word Messiah is actually an Egyptian word, Mesa, which means the fat of the crocodile, which was anointed on the initiate who, who had walked the, the, the left eye of Horus and the right eye of Horus, because the left eye and the right eye are the two brains. You have to integrate the two brains in, other two, in order to see both the linear construct and the um, the right brain or the whole construct, which is the electromagnetic field, okay? So, as those who know me know, I could talk about all this for days, okay? But I wanna boil it down to the essence. So, what's really important? Status, standing, and capacity. This is where we get into the nature of law. Because as I said yesterday, and as I said in my interview with Jeff, for those of you who saw it, that our current status is bonded as the surety, which means the collateral, guaranteeing a, a, um, uh, a facility for debt, existing debt, former debt, and the creation of new debt. The perpetual extraction of our life force because what do we do all day long? We chase money, what we call money. It's not even money. It's just negotiable commercial paper that has a dual point of a secured party and a debtor. So the franchise is what people have called the straw man, the all caps name. It's what creates debt. It is a bonded, I mean it is a bankrupt debt facility in a corporate structure called the United States, and our status is the bonded surety that underwrites and guarantees that debt. It's no different than Morpheus in the movie The Matrix when he showed Neo the, the copper top battery and said this is what we are. This is how our life force is extracted from us. This is how we contractually consent to being lifted off of the land because our body is the land. This is known as a landed estate in how we approach the issue of correcting our status. And I'll get into that in a minute as to how the nature of an estate is constructed and where all this comes down to the, to the bottom line, if you will. So our bodies are the, are the landed estate. Everything I've just very quickly synopsized is how we have been, how we have allowed ourselves to abrogate our standing within ourselves, projected outside of ourselves, agreed to be willless, and allow the external construct to be the directive principle. So that castrated male or truncated masculine principle is really our allowance of what we've already done within ourselves. The twin pillars, the king and the priest, the king holds all the land because we've allowed ourselves to be removed from the land. You cannot have law if you're not on the land. So all this talk in all of the law movement about common law and grand juries and all of that is all bullshit. It's real, but nobody who's doing it has the standing or the status to do that. You must be on the land to be able to have the standing to do that. It's like Russian dolls nestled one in, inside the other, okay? So all we need to know is one thing, ourselves, and we know all of creation, all of how all of this works. This is part of your remembering, because you know this already, okay? And when you start seeing the matrix, the projected containment field, the prison, and you start letting go of the belief systems, whatever belief systems you have, astrology, numerology, et cetera, et cetera, that's when an initiate in Egypt and Sumer and Babylon and Rome all the way to the present time who was trained to integrate both sides of the brain and was lifted up the 
above the polarized mass hallucination consensus reality could control it because he, could, he or she or they could play both sides against the middle. It's very simple. It's what Machiavelli has said. You know, basically, it's the Machiavellian principle, divide and conquer. But here's the big clue. Okay, so Larkin, for example, Larkin Rose spoke about this one little thing, but he's missing something because he's still projecting it outside of himself. He's missing the fact that we have found the enemy and it is us because we have to start with our own separation, our own polarization. It's something I call the enemy construct. And when I realized this in my process of like walking these points for the last 45 years and literally burning it through my DNA and my body and becoming aware of all of this, it's what I call and called 15, 20 years ago, the enemy construct. And I composed a phrase which is, there are no enemies, there are only opportunities. So what are the opportunities? The opportunities are to t the opportunity to take full responsibility for what we are, what we've created, and not put it outside of ourselves. Because the minute you start attacking an enemy outside of yourself, you are in a polarity and you are locked into it. So you become the opposite of your, of your enemy. I'm the good guy, he's the bad guy. You know, um, Clarkin talked about the whole Tolkien trilogy. It's nothing but a big hologram for us to realize that we have created our own enemy and projected it outside of ourselves. So if you follow or choose to follow that maxim, there are no enemies, only opportunities, that every time you encounter something that you think has taken something from you, that owes you something, that you are going to blame for why you are the way you are, your conditions in life, then you've disempowered yourself. But the minute you forgive yourself for creating that construct, and commit yourself to walk that point and open it up to release yourself from that separation, that polarization, then you are empowering yourself and you begin to stand as a fully integrated grounding creator being who can do anything. And if your intent and purpose is to direct your will to rebuild this world into one that's best for all, then you can do it. But then if you come together with others of like intent, just think how powerful that is. That's why we cannot be stopped, okay? The other reason is like what I said before, as above, so below, used to be a reality. That half there that's called the heaven dimensions has been collapsed into a singularity. It's right here. So if you see what they are trying to do is what I described yesterday, the two pillars of Otto the Great, I'm going to be the king. My lineage is going to be the prince electors who are going to hold the land and we will hold and own and control all land and all flesh and all souls. And the pope at that time said, fine, you are going to be the king and I'm going to be the priest. And we will meet at, it at the end of time and merge it together into a singularity in a throne in Jerusalem. And why Jerusalem? Because it's on the 33 degree parallel of latitude and the 33 degree longitude because it's a outpicturing numer numerologically, numerically of our own spine that has 33 vertebrae. That's why the metaphor of Jesus in his life was 33 years because he walked, so to speak, the 30 uh, vertebrae to the last three and then you open it up. Okay, but that's all externalized. You don't have to do that. You don't have to study all this stuff. You just have to remember it. So as that is embodied in law, it's what I said, that key phrase, status, standing, and capacity. Let me ask you all a question. Do you want to embody and hold the status of a bonded charity to a bankrupt franchise and be the perpetual, eternal, collateralized instrument for life negating and destroying fictions and law? <laughs> if anybody here 
would like to contract or recontract to that, I suggest this meeting's not for you. <laughs> so what we have done is we've re contracted and recontracted innumerable times. We recontract ourselves to that status over and over again. And the reason why so many of the leading masters in breaking the code and the law and all the systems went to prison because they didn't understand this. They allowed their mind, which was incredibly acute, to lead them instead of their being because our beings know who we are. We don't have to find it outside of ourselves, although it helps because the whole hologram we're in is a reflective mechanism for us to see ourselves, to discover ourselves. But unfortunately, a lot of these guys who I studied with, who were my mentors and so forth, almost all of them went to prison because they didn't understand this, as brilliant as they were. Okay? And they didn't understand the whole multidimensional dynamics of how it all worked. So I want to talk about the practicalities, okay? Because our real status, at least in initially the, in the part of North America that's called the United States, is to be a private American national. And one of the fascinating, incredible things in, in my process over 45 years is in the last five years, the accelerating pace with how things are lining up and falling into place is, is beyond imagination, even for me. And I took a lot of psychedelics in my day. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine a lot of things, and I've seen a lot of things, but it's like living in the most extraordinary movie as these things fall into place. So what I'm leading to is the example of this name, Pantera that 15 years ago, or thereabouts, actually 16 years ago, I used to have a company in Mexico, and I speak fairly fluent Spanish. I was in a hotel somewhere in Mexico, and I was walking by, you know how all the hotels have different rooms, you know, we're in the Mixteca room. So I walked by the Pantera room. It's actually the Latin root for every cat. Um, you know, if you look at the Latin names for every cat, it always ends with Pantera. So because I was born in, uh, in North America and then I got matriculated into the false hologram, the matrix in the United States Corporation, and everything that I've studied is U.S. law and so forth, although I've studied world law and international law and many other things, but the focus is in the United States because the United States is the pivot point, the fulcrum. But it's not just private American national. It's private African national. It's private Australian national. It's private Antarctican, Antarctican national. We, we're going to liberate the penguins. <laughs> and it's private Asian national. The only one that doesn't fit that is Europe. So we'll just add an A to the front and an A to the back because Europe comes from a Greek goddess named Europa and there's a reason for that too and so on and so forth. So we'll call them European nationals. And there's seven continents and so there's seven chakras. It's an out picturing and an in picturing as within, so without. So that's an important point, as within, so without, which means also as without, so within which means look at the world as it is now, and that shows you what we're like inside. Okay, okay. <laughs> there is no separation, okay? But as I've been saying, as I've studied for a long time, and I know as an absolute within my own being, it's just an outpicturing of our own enemy construct, our own projection of the enemy within as if it is without. A private American national has unalienable rights, cannot be leaned. That means you cannot be bonded as a debt surety. That's all it means. So you hear people talking about constitutional rights and bill of rights and so forth. None of those exist within the civitas, the civil slash public body, because you do not have substantive rights, rights of your substance of your being. 
you only have privileges that they call civil rights. Because civil comes from the word civitas, that containment field. We'll give you the illusion of rights, but there are privileges. The Lord, Mayor of London, giveth and the Lord taketh away. He can give you civil rights, but if you do not follow his codes and his rules, he can take them away. Okay. The city of London is where something called the Temple Bar is. That was established by the Templars who created the original um, system of travel and security for banking in the 1100s and the 1200s. Eventually they knew they were going to be uh, co-opted and had to go underground, so they formed a country called Switzerland that adopted that cross, the Swiss cross. That, that's the Templars. And they set it up in the heart of Switzerland to be the center of banking and control. So Temple Bar in the city of London is where they created the temple because it's all about the temple religion. The temples have been the banks for thousands of years. All the banks on, in Rome were, in a, were on a street called Janus Street. Janus was the two-faced or two-headed god. That's why the Roman eagle is two-headed. That's why the Nazi eagle was two-headed. That's the dichotomy. And if the temple of Janus was open, I mean the door was open, they were at peace. It may have been the other way around, but the door was either open or closed, at peace or at war. And war is an interesting thing that I'll get into in a minute because that's the other aspect of how they control us because we are fighting ourselves that we projected into this hologram. We are at war with ourselves and war is how you are <clears throat> completely controlled within the legal monetary system. You must resolve and integrate back into your being and be at peace because, and I'll explain that in a minute, how that works. So it's all about the temple and the Janus and the two-headed God and the door that's open or closed, whether at war or peace. So the Templars knew this because they went and dug under, <clears throat> excuse me, the temple in Jerusalem and they found all kinds of goodies in the year 1127 and then they ran over to the Pope and said, hey, we found it. Yep, that's good. Because they were the bloodlines called the Merovingians who came out of Jerusalem after the Romans kind of knocked the temple down came up to uh, southern France and became the royal bloodlines of Europe, starting in around 700, 750, out of which was birthed Charlemagne and who created the Holy Roman Empire in the year 800 until his descendant, Otto the Great, in 962, created that agreement that I talked about yesterday. So they knew all this. The Templars knew this. And they created the banking system. The, the groundwork for it. And then they founded Switzerland. Then they went to London and created the Temple Bar. And then they created the Four Inns of Court. And then they created the Office of the Exchequer, who was the Arch Treasurer that I mentioned yesterday, that George III was identified in the Treaty of Paris as the Arch Treasurer and the um, Prince Elector of the Holy Roman Empire and the United States of America. So the Arch Treasurer is in the Prince Elector is the Holy Roman Empire. So the United States is part of the Holy Roman Empire. We'll get to that in a minute. But basically that's all in the city of London. And out of the Temple Bar and the four inns of court comes the Bar Association. Bar, for many of you know, but some don't, means the British Accredited Registry. Because everything on this planet, down to the bananas and the apples that we eat now, have a barcode on it. It's all registered as crown property. It's part of the royal estate. So when you think, like there was the guy who was the optimist, I don't know his name, he talked about owning property. I think he was, you know, he was a technology, but somebody else was talking about owning land and stuff like that. You don't own any land. You're just a tenant and you're the bonded surety for it. So you were just volunteering to be the bonded surety against the legal fiction title to create monetized debt through the franchise that is your name in all capital letters 
which when you were born, you were voluntarily placed as a ward of the court and you were abandoned by your mother. And if you look on your birth certificate, she's called the informant. She put you in a form so that you could be registered and become part of the royal estate and property of the crown. All land, all flesh, and all souls. Okay, so the bar associations of the world, the lawyers, are nothing more than captains of ships. They're called esquires. And the minimum office that you must have to be an esquire is captain. So they are captains of the ship. And their bar card is a letter of mark and reprisal to board your commercial vessel to plunder for booty and prize, to reprise it back to the crown, which is at war with you because you're an enemy of the state. How many of you did not know that? Okay. It all fits together, absolutely, as an integrated whole. And if you're not aware of that, ignorance of the law is no excuse, and you're, as they say, pretty well screwed, okay? Because you're registered as property of the crown, period, royal estate. Of course, there's a lot more detail to all of that, but this is the nature of your bonded surety to a, franchi a bankrupt franchise, to a bankrupt corporation, to a global system in bankruptcy. Because bankruptcy is in maritime and admiralty law. It's the law of the sea. So when you were born, you were birthed. You came down the waters of your mother's canal. It's all water metaphor. And you birthed at the dock. The dock was there to receive you. And the port master took you in and registered the cargo of your being, your soul, your spirit, in the cargo of the physical body, which is now going to be informed into an artificial construct that you operate your whole life through, including being a vessel in commerce. So as a vessel in commerce, you are floating on the sea of commerce. Now we get into some interesting things, okay? In the year 1666, there's that number again. They like numbers. The Fire of London, she said, which was actually 1665. They always know what they're going to do, and they set it up. They had a game plan and a blueprint, a calendar blueprint for a time, because they are, mas they are and were master astrologers. They could read all of the numerics and the symbols and the structures and all of that. It's part of the esoteric training. Because in 1536, a guy named Ignatius Loyola, who was a Spanish priest, who was in what we call the Four Corners area, where they were hauling gold out of the area of uh, Utah and, and that Four Corners area directly to uh, Texas and putting them on ships and sending them back to Spain. Gold that had been there for thousands and thousands of years that he suddenly got a download. He was activated. He said, I know who I am. I have to create an order, the Society of Jesus. So he made his way back to Rome. He told the Pope, he said, yep, you're it. And they created the Jesuits around 1536. So by 1540, they said, we need a, a gathering, a council. So they created what was called the Council of Trent. And they met for 24 years. Do you know back then what you could do in 24 years? That's a long time. They didn't have to worry about all the entrapments of our modern system. That's a long time to bring in every master astrologer and numerologist and mapping of the whole hologram. They knew exactly how to plan the next 500 years to create the end point because they had access to the blueprint. There's a lot of reasons why, and I'm not going to go into it, or I'd spend another hour talking to you. Nonetheless, by 1665, they knew that the city of London needed to be rebuilt. So, because it was, you know, sprawl and all kinds of mess. So they burned it down, called it the Great Fire of London, and they re-established the city of London, a square mile, one mile square, that is a sovereign city-state. So that was the second one after they created the Vatican. And so 
that became the center of the crown. That eventually became the owner of the Bank of London, Bank of England, which became the model for the central bank system. It's where the Rothschilds then came to in the 17 and 1800s, et cetera, et cetera. And that's where they birthed the British East Indies Company. the Virginia Company, the joint stock companies that became the nation corporations of the world. There's a lot of history in that. We're not going to go into all of that. <laughs> but in 1666, knowing what they were creating, passed an act. That act was called the Sesta KV Act. There had been another one done in 1540, interestingly, by Henry VIII. But this was really the key. Your whole world revolves around that one act. Anybody here knew that before I said that? <laughs> you guys don't count. 